Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about contact creator tools and specifically uh, this thing called the GUI designer, which uh, was advertised as one of the big new features of contact six. And yet most people have never touched it. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Okay. Important thing to know about contact creator tools is that without contact running, it really can't do anything. It's like a sidecar application. And basically the way it works is you launch contact either in your DAW or as a standalone, and then you launch creator tools and creator tools can kind of peek inside of contact and manipulate different aspects of either the UI or the underlying samples. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch uh, contact. I'm actually going to launch contact as like a standalone app, not as a plugin within a DAW, um, not for any reason other than it looks cleaner uh, when I'm making a video. Uh, you could do it in a DAW and it would not really change this at all. Next thing I'm going to do now that I've got contact open is I'm going to open creator tools. As you can see right here, Creator Tools is pretty much just uh, an empty window. There's uh, uh, references to a couple test projects that I did a while back, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, so the purpose of Creator Tools is actually to manipulate things within whatever instrument is loaded into contact. And right now I don't have any instrument and I'm gonna create a new one. The samples I'm working with are this uh, xylophone that I recorded a while back and just never bothered to turn into an actual contact instrument. Okay, so I've created this um, new instrument and as you can see it says new default here and up here it says new default so that means that uh, creator tools can see what's happening inside contact and everything's working as it should be so i'm actually going to call this xylophone and as you can see it changed here to xylophone so yeah uh, they're tightly integrated okay so as you can see there are two tabs here there's one called instrument editor uh, and there's one called GUI Designer. Uh, instrument Editor allows you to do things like um, manipulate groups, run scripts against uh, the underlying samples. GUI Designer allows you to design a GUI. So the phrase GUI Designer conjures up something in my mind that this is not. What I pictured when uh, somebody said GUI Designer was that it was like a tool where you could like draw elements onto a stage and you know visually create a user interface. That's not what this is. This is actually a way of manipulating the underlying data that goes into creating a user interface. So it's important to know that and to realize that this isn't some magical tool where you can just kind of like paint your UI into existence. That's just, yeah, it's not what this is. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I even start manipulating anything in Creator Tools is I'm actually going to go into Instrument Options in Contact and I'm gonna go down here to um, uh, resource container and I'm going to create an empty resource container and we'll go to our folder and I'm going to just call it xylophone okay yes I would like to create one and I'm also going to save this empty xylophone instrument also call it xylophone One of the aspects of Creator Tools is it tries to keep track of all of the assets that go into making uh, a contact instrument. So like NKI files and any scripts and any uh, you know underlying images. Uh, it expects you to create what's called a project, which is really just a JSON file. Um, and that object will be used to keep track of all those files. So I just clicked new project and we're gonna go to that same folder and I'm gonna call it xylophone. And as you can see, it kind of changed things around here and it's showing us what's in this directory. So worth noting that uh, it has created this file, this ncpr file. And if you're to load that up within Sublime Text, you can see that it's a pretty basic JSON file. Uh, I'm also going to add the nki file that I just made and we'll see how that gets reflected within the JSON. So you can see it's keeping track of every single file we add to it. Not a big deal. Okay, so in order to actually do this GUI designer thing, it actually tells you this right here. What you need to do is you need to create something called a performance view. A performance view is basically a file that you create that has all of the definitions for a UI within contact. And normally when we're making a contact instrument, what we do is we define where we want all of our controls to be using the script editor within contact this is a replacement for that workflow. So instead of doing that, what you're do, gonna do is you're gonna put a little stub of code within the script editor that loads the performance view and then allows you to manipulate the controls just as though you had created them within the script editor. Okay, so um, what we need to do is we need to define a performance view and 
Uh, the way we do that is we click this plus here and we go down here to performance view. Now, the reason I created that empty um, resource container before is because it creates a bunch of folders, uh, like subfolders underneath your instrument. And I wanted it to create a folder called performance view. It's very important that you save your performance view in that folder because that's what enables um, contact to do this kind of tight uh, integration with creator tools. So I'll show you what, what happens. So we're going to call this perf view or whatever, you know, it's a completely arbitrary name. And as you can see, um, it has done something within creator tools, right? Uh, it's got some parameters like the width and the height of the UI. Um, and if I change any of these, nothing is going to happen because I haven't actually linked my contact instrument script to this performance view. I need to do that loading. So we're going to go into script editor and do edit. And I'm just going to make a tiny one line on init block here. And we're going to do load performance view. And then we called it perf view NCK. Okay. Hit apply. Didn't get any errors, which it's probably a good sign. And you can see this got a little bit taller. And it got a little bit taller because it loaded the performance view. And the performance view says that it should be 50 pixels high. So let's say we wanted to make it 200 pixels. We just hit Save and Creator. And immediately, it's reflected there. So basically, any changes that you make on the left-hand side of the screen are going to be reflected in Contact itself. Uh, pretty useful. And that's kind of like the basis of the entire workflow. So now that we've got a performance view, and you know, obviously we can do things like you know, change the background color, like let's say we wanted it to be like a dark gray. We would do that. And then we can add controls, uh, just as though we were you know, adding a UI control within script. So I'm going to add a slider. And uh, yeah, there it is. Looks pretty crummy because it's not skinned. Uh, so I'm actually going to import some pictures. I have imported that. And now what I'm going to do with this slider is I'm just going to go to image. Uh, and I can just type that. What is it? Elegant knob. Um, OK, so let's say we wanted to make a knob that was just like a volume knob. Uh, I guess technically it's a slider, a volume slider. And um, we wanted to move it to the center, so like um, 300. And OK, moved it down a little bit. And we wanted to add a label. and. Um, Okay, let's uh, call it volume. And we can actually change the font and the color. So let's say we wanted um, it to be white. Okay, that's okay looking. And horizontal alignment, center. Okay, I guess that's horizontal within 87, width of 87. So where was this? 300? Okay, we'll make this 300 as well. Overshot. So this is a sort of situation where having an actual graphical editor would be really, really helpful because based, essentially what I'm doing is I'm just doing trial and error. At the same time, when I do trial and error normally to do this, to actually put together a UI, uh, I'm modifying the script either in the script editor or in Sublime Text or something like that. I'm pasting it in. I'm hitting apply. I'm going back to the performance view. It's nice not to have to leave the performance view in order to uh, modify aspects of the performance view. Uh, it's really frustrating to have to click back and forth only to discover that you move the label like five pixels too far or something like that. Okay, so just like that, I've created a little UI. Obviously, the volume knob doesn't actually do anything. So I've pasted in some boilerplate from the piano book uh, template that I made uh, a video about a while ago. It's basically just volume knob uh, callback code so they don't have to do any additional scripting right now. Hit apply, and now we can see this uh, this image is all jacked up. I don't really know why.
Okay, I'm noticing another aspect of this knob that I don't like, which is that it's expecting me to move horizontally. So I'm just going to click here and do vertical. And I'm going to change the scale to 500 because it seems like it's a little bit too responsive. Uh, I'm also going to make the min and max values 0 through a million. Okay, finally time to see whether or not this works. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm going to play some notes. Yeah. So we're able to reference those knobs in exactly the same way that we would be able to if we had just declared them uh, as variables within our script. Uh, only we didn't have to do the just really frustrating trial and error of uh, positioning everything. So where this really shines is being able to actually position all of your controls using this tree view instead of doing it in code. Okay, I think that's it. I basically just wanted to show off what the GUI designer is and how this workflow uh, could potentially speed up your instrument creation. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Obviously, if you're using Creator Tools, it means that you're using Contact 6, and it means that anyone who's using your instrument has to also have a copy of Contact 6. Uh, that's not a huge problem at this point. Most people have upgraded, but that being said, there are still some Contact 5 holdouts, so you know those people would not be able to use an instrument that was created in this fashion. Still, I think it's a useful tool and definitely a quicker way of setting up a UI. Okay, hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could hit like. And if you haven't done so already, uh, yeah, I recommend subscribing because I do a lot of these kinds of uh, contact tutorials. Okay, take care. Go make some instruments.